excited to be able to have this option. And I appreciate your flexibility. I know it's not the best scenario. The best is when you have a live class and we get to experience that growth and that energy and feel that, that lifting up from a group experience. But um, given the times and uh, because I'm in the uh, state of compromise with my immune system, I think this was the best uh, solution and it was just um, ready to take advantage of. I had received a lot of emails about uh, going online and support from the online community through Eventbrite and through other uh, yoga groups that I am associated with. And so I just uh, made the decision that it was the right time to experience that. And uh, this is a lovely space here, and those of you who come um, every month um, know that. And, and I really work to create a sacred space, a sacred safe space, so that you can have that opportunity to let go and to really align your body and mind and feel comfortable moving to that space. But you can create that sacred space at home. I, before I had this beautiful space, I created my sacred space in my bathroom. And it was the only place that I could get that quiet time without the kids or somebody bothering me. And I would do my yoga in my bathroom. And, uh, you know, lighting the candles, making sure it was clean, making sure I had at least enough space for me to lie down. Sometimes I didn't. And I would, you know, be sitting upright, but it, it just became that meditative space for me. So whether it's your bathroom or it's your bedroom or it's your, you know, kitchen space, dining room space, just create that space where it is, um, you know, smells and, and candles and things. And so we'll practice this yoga together. And then I think very soon we'll be able to have um, the, the next class, which is in two weeks. I have hopes that we'll be able to gather at that time too. Uh, so we'll go ahead and begin. I know that those of you who signed up, there were uh, several of you who were new um, and hadn't been here before, and I'm not sure if you've been uh, experienced Kundalini yoga before. Um, so just, we will uh, chant, we will, and sometimes the chant is silent. I believe today mostly it's silent, but there are um, the tuning in process and We'll do breathing and pranayama, which will be very important to building your immune system, specifically the ones that I'm gonna share with you today. We'll do a full Kriya, which will um, align the different chakras, align the body, uh, preparing the mind to go into meditative space. And the meditation that we're gonna to practice today is really to bring the mind to calm in turbulent times. But oftentimes our sleep pattern is offset because we have so much stress and we're so overwhelmed during the day, particularly now, and when we're changing seasons. So it's very hard to, to go into sleep. And with that sleep deprivation, again, our immune system is even more compromised. So it's really quieting the mind. And how do you do that? Well, we're gonna practice that today. Um, first, we're gonna tune in and I really want um, everyone to really those of you who've been practicing with me, it's not just a ritual, it's not just the thing we do to start the class or to quiet the class, and it does all of that, it gets everybody ready, but there is a vibration in the sound, and every cell has a vibration, and when we start with the toning, it'll be tuning in with the, the mantra, Aum Namo Gurudev Namo, and that sound vibration, it hits uh, the navel, the heart center, which is the thymus gland. Of course, it's the thyroid too, because the, the sound is moving up through here, but the sound really doesn't come out of the mouth, it comes out of the top of the head. So there's a vibration that comes out here. So when we go, Om Namo Gurudev Namo, that higher sound, that, that note, is connecting with this crown, this, just this auric field just outside of, outside of the body. And that's really important. And so we'll do that three times together on one breath and um, we'll begin. Okay, Mari, I'm going to help you. All right, let's begin with rubbing the palms together. This is immediately beginning to stimulate the nervous system. The nervous system ends in the fingers, the toes, the navel point just below the belly button, 
and the ears, and of course to the central nervous system in the brain. And so we're beginning to balance the right and left hemispheres of the brain to create some heat. And then that balance, bringing the palms together at the center of the heart, the heart center, right, the center of the chest, and the knuckles of the thumbs, they're just bent slightly. And I just come right into the center of the chest and it's three to five pounds of pressure, but just feel that pressure point. And the shoulders are relaxed down. You lift and lengthen the spine. Eyes are rolled up to the brow point. We call it the third eye or the sixth chakra. It's right between the eyebrows. And if you were to take your thumb and as a pressure point, just put a little pressure right there if you're not quite sure how to roll your eyes up. And you roll your eyes up and in. And inhale through the nose. And exhale, bring the hand down, but keep the eyeballs rolled up to that point. That is the pituitary gland. So we are trying to stimulate all of the glands of the body. Those are the guardians of health in our body, in this mind-body organism. And with the pressure of the postures of the eyes, the mudra, or the positioning of the hands, or the different positions, or the posture of the body, we are putting a pressure on those glands and that pressure builds, and when we release the posture, when we release through a breath, it stimulates that gland to begin operating the way it should, and sending signals and messages to heal, or to uh, move in a certain way, or to move into a creative space. And let's inhale deeply through the nose, expanding the navel. The navel is just below the belly button, so it's like a balloon. You inhale and expand and exhale. Pull that navel point back to the spine, exhaling through the nose. Again, inhale through the nose and exhale. And inhale and exhale. Now the shoulders don't rise up, it's just the navel moving in and out. I have my hand position here, so it's like a bellow. Inhaling and exhaling, the navel comes back to the spine. The shoulders are not moving, it's a deep breath. Let's continue doing that a couple more times. Inhaling, expanding the navel, and exhaling, pulling it right back to the spine. Again, inhale. And exhale. And we'll inhale together to tune in. Inhale deeply. Om. for the practice today to heal, to clear energy, release energy that does not serve you, to open the energy centers, to repattern, refresh, renew, exhale, and release your arms. They come resting on the knees, hands in Gion Mudra. Gion Mudra is a mudra of the hands, very important. So the index pad and the thumb pad are just gently pressed together and the other three fingers are out straight, resting on the knees. And really what you're doing is you're sitting silently, not just to be silent, but you're letting the frequency of your cells, 
You're letting the frequency of the mind, you're letting the frequency of the body systems coordinate, calibrate to that frequency of that energy field just outside of you. We call it the universe or the field that is opening up to your purpose on the planet. We all have a purpose and sometimes we are not tuned into that purpose and this is literally what we are doing in this practice today. The one thing is if you can inhale deeply and exhale, you can stay with your eyes closed or gently open your eyes. This practice is done with the eyes closed because we are, one, we are going to an in, inside space and we are opening up that awareness, but the eye positions that we will use will be different because we're tapping into different centers of the brain. And most of them primarily um, will be at the brow point right here. Um, just to share with you this uh, illness that I'm processing, it's, a, it's just a cold. I, I really intuitively know that. But, uh, and this is a link that I'll share with you later. I'm just, I, I study Ayurveda, and that's the science of the body systems. And it's really intricate with this yoga that we're practicing, and I just began to study it. But I'm also, I've been studying the oral health of the mouth and the nose um, through a series, and I can share that um, link with you when I share this link. And the mouth is the gateway to the gut, and the gut is where we're learning where it needs to have um, probiotic, and the antibiotics have killed off a lot of the good uh, bacteria that help fight our immune system. So we have a lot of problems when our health is um, low, our immune system is low, there's a problem in the gut and the digestion. And so the breath that we do, all of the uh, work that we do really works from the gut or the navel center, this whole energy center here. But the mouth is a very intricate biome. That's where there's a lot of bacteria. And I could feel that when I was sleeping last night and they said something of dry mouth. I'm, uh, well, I don't ever get dry mouth. Well, we do when we're sick, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and I noticed that my mouth was dry. So these bacteria are incredibly, there's an intelligence going on. So they cut off the, the oxygen supply through the, not, through the nose. So then in the night, people, when they're in a compromised immune situation, they begin breathing through the mouth. And as soon as the mouth becomes dry, then the, the bacteria proliferate, the bacteria that are the pathogens. And I could feel that happening. So I, and the saliva is um, that layer that neutralizes that. So I worked very hard to keep my mouth closed and to keep the saliva moving through my mouth. And then uh, this morning when I woke up, I did a breathing exercise and I could feel suddenly everything shift and change where I was not feeling very good at like four o'clock in the morning. You gotta stop with your claws, Marlon. So we're gonna practice that. So the hand posture is simply in Gyan Mudra again. Uh, we're gonna be doing a breath of fire, but it's through the mouth. And this is to really amplify the immune system. So it's something you can practice every day. We're gonna do it for um, just a little bit more than a minute. So the breath of fire is coming from the navel. Um, so I just want all of you to place your uh, two to three fingers below the belly button. And this is where the navel is. Now we practice it and we teach it first by sticking the tongue out, almost so that you're, the tongue is attached to the navel. So stick the tongue out as if it's gonna to try to reach the chin. It won't, but we're gonna try. And you pant. A dog has a perfect breath of fire. So we're just gonna pant just to practice it. That's it, so keep going. And you should feel the fingers, the, the belly, the navel point just pushing against the fingertips. And now bring the tongue in and continue the breath. So it's now moving through the nasal passage. And let's inhale deeply and exhale. So we're gonna do that breath, we're gonna do it through an O breath mouth. 
and we're gonna be, it's gonna be like an upper chest. So it's really gonna stimulate the lymph glands. It's gonna go something like this. Take your mouth into an L like you're um, sucking on a large straw. You can see where Marley's sitting, he's moving back and forth. That's my navel moving back and forth. Close the eyes, roll them up to the brow point. And continue. back and forth. Really let the muscles of the legs shake. It releases tension in the nervous system. You release tension in the hips from sitting, from the knees, from the ankles, and at any time as we are in the postures and rotate the ankles. If you feel that you can't hold the posture, just reset. We rotate the ankles the opposite way. Reset and then come back into the posture. Okay, so we're gonna begin warming up. We're gonna do a few warm ups and then we'll move into the Kriya. Uh, so that breathing exercise, that one can be done on your own at home and we just did it for a minute and a half. You can build up uh, to a capacity of three minutes, but it's excellent to practice in the morning to really get that lymph system moving and to ramp up your immune system. Okay, let's come on to the hands and knees. Be conscious that you can hear me. Okay, coming onto the hands and knees, you want to make your body into a rectangle. The hands are as wide as the shoulders, the knees as wide as the hips, the feet, tops of the feet are pressed just onto the mat. So your body is equally distributed. Spread the fingers wide. So each finger, each thumb is pressed into the mat equally. And you want to center yourself. Every movement you do is from the navel point. So that navel point just below the belly button. Pull it in slightly and up and squeeze it slightly. Then we're going to move like this. We're going to be inhaling and exhaling through the nose. So keeping the elbows straight, we're going to inhale, eyes rolled up to the brow point. Exhale, arch the back up, chin to the chest. And continue, inhaling and exhaling. The tailbone moves as just an extension of the upper body. So it's the upper body that's moving. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And as you're moving, there are 
there's different points that you move into this meditative space. So it's a deep breath, not a deep stretch. So as you're inhaling and exhaling, powerful inhale, equal powerful exhale. So make that your first consciousness. Lock the body into the posture. You move fluidly. Eyes stay rolled up. Now focus the mind, because the mind will begin to wander. Let the body do what the body knows how to do. Focus the mind on the sound current. Inhaling sut, exhaling na. Sut, na, sut, na. Silent chant, but hear it in the breath. The word is Sanskrit, sat means truth, nam is your identity of that truth. That's what we call a seed mantra. Everything we do, every breath, is to bring yourself into your truth, your truth of wholeness, health, vitality, strength, wisdom, everything bright and beautiful as a human being. That's who we are, and we're pulled out of balance all day long. These are tools to bring us back, that pendulum to swing back into that balance, and to have recognition and understanding when we move out of balance. Last few seconds, let's increase your pace, your personal pace. So increase the pace, breathe deeper. Okay, most important part, here we go, inhale, is up, hold breath, pull mulabunda, that's pull the navel in and up, squeeze, pulling the energy up, hold the posture, exhale, chin to the chest, arch the back up as high as you can, now pull mulabunda, squeeze it in and up, hold, and inhale, release the posture, bring the hips back to the heels, bring the forehead to the floor, we're going to come into child pose. The arms come behind you, resting on the floor on the mat. Shoulders rest over the knees. Relax the breath. Relax the spine. Move the knees as wide as you need to to lower the spine gently. So the knees don't have to necessarily be together. They can be wide and you can come forward. Just the posture, let the body relax. And inhale deeply through the nose. And exhale slowly coming up. Let the head come up last. And just sit in the center of the space just for a moment, relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the face. Inhale and exhale. And just gently release the posture. We're going to come sitting back in what we call easy posture. Took over my pillow, aren't we? We're going to move the spine. What we call spinal flex. So you want to grab a hold of the ankles or you can get, grab a hold of the shins. It's just your point of leverage. And when you inhale and exhale, we're going to inhale and you're lifting the rib cage up. So the spine is going to move back and forth like this from the upper back. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. And I'm moving the upper rib cage. I'm lifting. Lift, lift. And you can move faster or slower. It's your body's pace. Do it with the breath. Don't move without breathing. Inhale and exhale. Focus the mind. Focus the eyes at the brow point, the pituitary gland. Focus the breath on the sound of sat nam. Sat nam. Sat on the inhale, nam on the exhale. Again, it's a deep breath, not a deep stretch. The body will open up as soon as the breath expands that space. So let the breath do its work. Let the prana do its work. Prana is your life force. It has to come in through the inhale and 
and leave whatever our body doesn't need through the exhale. Let it circulate. Move the body. Okay, last 15 seconds. Let's increase the pace. Your personal pace. Deepen the breath. Deeper breath. Powerful breath. Okay, here we go. Most important part. Inhale to the center. Squeeze the middle of the Pull the navel in and up. Squeeze it. The energy moves up to the heart, to the throat. Roll the tongue. The under tongue pushes to the roof of the mouth. The eyes are focused at the brow. Squeeze the energy. Exhale, release. Hand through the on mudra, resting on the knees. Eyes are closed, rolled out. Meditate. Let the face be relaxed. The eyes, let the breath come easy, gentle, natural. tension in the knees or the hips. If you are feeling tension, it's good to sit on a pillow or, or fold a blanket up, sit on a blanket. You want to lift the spine up. When, when our navel and our abdominal muscles aren't strong, we'll curve the spine and we'll let the lower back do the work. So to help that process, to help support our back and to help continue to develop the navel center, you can sit on a pillow to have that elevation in the back. All right, so here we go. Continuing, warming up, moving through up the spine. Bring the arms up, fingers in front, thumbs in back. Again, be very conscious about the movement. Even if you've done this 100,000 times, really tune in to what you need to do. So pull the navel in and up. Let the spine, let the shoulders relax down the spine. Eyes rolled up to the brow point. Really center and begin. Inhale left, exhale right. So keep the elbows as best you can at 180 degrees, parallel to the floor. You're inhaling to the left through the nose. You're exhaling to the right. The head, shoulders, neck, arms, elbows, upper body is all moving together as one unit. Keep that slight mulabanda, that slight root lock pull from the navel all the way to the root. You're grounding. And you're moving back and forth, churning. Again, deep breath. Satna, satna. Hear the sound in every breath. Satna, satna. Powerful breath, and as your body opens and as your body is ready, we begin to move faster, rhythmically, connecting with your heart, connecting with the breath, bringing the frequency of your systems to a higher elevated frequency. We're moving out of those lower centers of fear, anxiety, worry, depression. Every human being has that tendency multiple times through the day. And sometimes we go in and out, and sometimes we stay there. We need to bring ourselves out and know that we have the ability to bring ourselves out immediately. Okay, last 10 seconds. Increase your pace, deepen your breath. Okay, here we go. Most important part, inhale to the center. Pull Mulabunda, squeeze the navel in and up, hard pull, roll the under tongue, push it to the roof of the mouth, eyes focus deeply at the brow point, squeeze. Squeeze the toxins out of the body, squeeze the spine, and exhale, release. Arms resting on the knees, hands in the mudra, eyes rolled up to the brow point, face is soft, tongue just floats in the center of the mouth. Spine is long and tall, meditate. Try not to move, let the frequency adjust. Get out of the way, don't resist. Inhale 
deeply. Exhale. Okay. All right, shake the legs out. We're going to do a couple more um, warm-ups and we're going to rest and recover and then we'll get ready for the Kriya. All right, so we're going to stretch the life nerve. Just do it this way just for a moment just to see how that works okay so um we're gonna come down let me stand up here yeah that's a little better um so the feet are as wide as the hips so they're parallel to each other and i want you to feel every toe equally grounded into the floor and you're going to bring the arms up you're going to inhale 
and push the hips back. Exhale, and just let the hands hang down. Just see where you are with your flexibility. So you want the heart, the chest, you want the chest pushing toward the thighs, just gently hanging. And we're gonna to try to grab the toes. If you can grab the toes, if you have enough flexibility at this point to grab the toes, if not, grab the ankles or grab a pant leg. If you have pants on or if not, just grab the backs of the shins. But you want the legs straight. The head is gonna hang down and you're gonna grab the toes if you can and push the thumbs into the toenail. You're stimulating what we call the life nerve. And I'll turn this way so that you can see the hips are going out, the heart, the back is as flat as you can. And just let the head hang down and breathe long and slow and deep. You're gonna inhale deeply and then exhale. Inhale through the nose, exhaling through the nose. Continue on your own, slow the breath. We're stimulating the life nerve. The life nerve runs from the toes, the big toes, up the backs of the legs. You can feel that stretch in the back of the legs. Keep lengthening the spine. Keep trying to bring the chest toward the knees. You don't want to round the back. The back if you feel the back rounding, then lift up higher and flatten the back. So that, that life nerve, it comes up crosses through the pelvic region, the sciatic, of course crosses up the spine, up through the cranials, and it ends at the ocular nerve. So when you put your eyes, you eye mudra at the brow point of the pituitary, you are stimulating that nerve. Or whatever eye mudra we have, we're stimulating that nerve. And so right now it's from the toe to the eyes. Keep hanging, slow deep breathing. Less than a minute. Let the spine lengthen. Feel that lengthening in the back of the legs. stretch pose. So we're going to be stretching that life nerve in a different way. We're going to use the breath of fire. Let's see. I think this is probably the better way to go. We're going to use the breath of fire from the navel. So I'm going to start in the back. The heels, you're going to squeeze the heels together. So start from here. Inhale. Exhale, all the breath out. Now squeeze the little button, squeeze in at the navel, squeeze the butt off, squeeze the thighs, squeeze the heels together. Now we're, our arms are gonna go on the side of our body as we lift our head and shoulders six inches and we're gonna lift the feet six inches. So really kind of bouncing at the navel. And we're gonna do a breath of fire. If you feel that your lower back is compromised, you feel any pull or you feel the pull from the, the hip flexors, Put your hands underneath your butt with the palms facing down and that automatically begins to support the lower back. Ideally, we want to keep our legs straight, but if you feel that, again, you're being pulled from the lower back and the navel isn't doing the work, if the navel does the work, the back is not going to be compromised. But if your navel isn't strong enough yet, you're going to feel that pull in the lower back, you can bend the knees slightly. 
So it looks like this. Lifting the head and shoulders, lifting the feet. Eyes are open, staring at the big toes. Breath of fire. Okay, so ideally that's what it looks like. Again, you can put your hands under your butt or bend the legs if you need to. And let's just practice that breath of fire before we go into it. So put your three fingers or two fingers just below the belly button. So one the top finger should be at the bottom of the belly button. And stick the tongue out so the tongue is trying to reach the chin and begin to pant. Now keep panting, close the mouth, bring the tummy in, close the lips gently and continue the breath through the nose. You should feel that navel pushing against the fingertips. Okay, inhale through the nose and exhale. And let's try it. Okay, here we go. Inhale through the nose. Exhale all the breath out. Lift the head and shoulders six inches. Squeeze the heels, lift them. Breath of fire. Good, eyes open, looking at the toes. Keep going. If you feel you have to drop the legs, we're only going to do this less than a minute, then keep the breath going. Readjust. Bring the legs up. If you have to drop the head and shoulders down, keep the breath going. The breath is key. So no matter how many times your legs come up and down on your breath or your back uh, shoulders go up and down, keep the breath going. Keep the eyes focused on the big toes. That's focusing the mind. Don't let the eyes wander. Stay one point and clear. This is building the capacity of the navel. It's turning on 72,000 nerve endings in the navel, which are like a burst going through the entire system. You'll feel it when we end. Almost there. Okay, most important part, inhale. Pull it, pull the navel in and up. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Release. Lie on the back. Let go. Arms down to the side of the body. Legs relaxed. Just sit in the center of that. Lay in the center of that. Feel that energy flowing through your entire body. Just let it go. Your nervous system has just been realigned. Nervous system is the key to staying clear and not losing yourself and all the chaos around you. Just relaxing for another minute before we start the Kriya. Every time we are in relax, the cells of the body take over. So the pressure of the pranayama, the breath exercise, the pressure of the body mudra, the eye mudra, when we release, the glandular system is now suddenly turned on, the nervous system is turned on in the line, the cells are vibrating, and the real work of the body starts. You start it all off with holding the posture the best you can, maintaining the breath, maintaining the focus, and now you get to relax and let that highly intelligent system inside your body take over. When we resist, we don't allow and set the space for that to happen. That's when disease and illness come into the system. That's when anxiety and worry and depression, all of those things come into the system. When we don't do the things we need to do to align it, create that space for it, and then let the body, mind, organism take over and support us to be the best that we are, the most creative space that we have, the highest elevation that we have. Okay, we're going to move into the Kriya. So let's inhale deeply. Exhale completely. 
your chest. And you're gonna rock side to side, left to right. We're just gonna massage the spine, the sacrum. Let the whole body rock together. Feeling that gentle massage up the spine, the shoulders, the shoulder blades. Let the cranials and the neck rock back and forth. Let the skull rock back and forth. Let the brain rock back and forth. And we come up, we're going to do it one of two ways, depending if you're compromised in your back, if you have any strain in, uh, or injury in your back. If you do, you just want to gently roll to the left, put your hands on the floor, and lift your body. Keep your head, don't move and strain with your neck. Lift with your arms. If you move and strain with your neck, you're going to pull your upper back out. And if not, then you're going to roll back and forth from shoulder blades to tailbone like a ball, keeping your chin tucked. Feel that nice adjustment in the spine, and then come all the way up with some momentum. Back to easy posture. And take a sip of water if you have it. Okay. All right, so the Kriya that we're going to do today is for disease resistance. So it's specifically to keep the body guarded against viruses, colds, and flu viruses. So again, we're simply going to, through the Kriya, through the posture, through the breathing, we're going to be stimulating the lymph system, we're going to be stimulating the glands. Once the body is aligned and the mind is free to be in that meditative space, that's what we call shunya. The yogis call it shunya. It's perfect bliss. It's the meditative mind where we can see the pathways out of whatever situation we're in. We have clarity. We don't feel depression. You can't possibly, because once you're in shunya, your pineal gland is secreting. And the reason we move into depression, we move into anxiety, we move into fear, is because that pineal gland is this little tiny grain of rice gland above the upper palate in the center of the brain. And when it's not operating, then we are in fear mode. We are in uh, addiction mode. We are in anxiety mode. We're in depression mode. That's what seeps in. So when we align the, the systems of the body and we create that space so that the, those glands are operating, then we're going to be able to elevate even more into our highest self. And it's, it's really that simple. So let's go on that journey and continue on more. We're going to come back onto the hands and knees, back into the cat cow. We're going to move a little bit more fluidly and rapidly because the spine is warmed up. So back on two hands and knees. Again, uh, pads of the, of the uh, wrists or the hands are equally into the floor. Knees are as wide as the hips. Arms are as wide as the shoulders. Every finger is spread wide. Feel the weight of the body equally between the fingers, the thumbs, the tops of the feet. Eyes rolled up to the brow point. And begin. Inhale, exhale. Movement through the chest, not the head. The head is really coming along for the ride, just like the tailbone is. You're moving the upper body. And you can move slower, or you can move faster. But move with your breath. Again, it's a deep breath. It's not a deep stretch, but the depth will come in as the prana, the life force, the breath, opens up the body. Body will open. Keep going. Find the rhythm. Connect it with this beautiful mantra. The mantra for opening ourselves up for our highest purpose on this planet. If we are in and operating in our purpose, we're in joy. All of those strife fades. And that's really what we're doing. We're opening ourselves up to operating in complete joy, complete
complete bliss, complete prosperity. In the Ayurvedic lens, in the Ayurvedic study of the mind-body organism, the health and the science of it, you're, you're continuing. I, I'm just talking to help you not think about the time. There are four goals in life. One of those goals, the first goal, is the goal of health. The goal of sustenance. The second goal is prosperity. To be able to have all that you need to live in your highest purpose in this planet. The third goal is to be able to work and live in your purpose, to find your purpose on this planet. And the fourth goal is to be able to elevate, to be able to leave out of your body and elevate to the next highest realm. Whether that's heaven in your uh, system, belief system, whether that's the next dimension, whatever it is, it's still the same thing to be able to elevate out. Inhale and exhale. Inhaling sat, exhaling nam. Continue. focus on the mantra because the mind will start to wonder, it will start to think and go out of the present moment. If you are thinking about when is this going to end, if you're out of the present moment, if you're thinking about what happened before, if you're thinking about what's going to happen later, if you're trying to figure out the posture, stay in the breath, stay in the mantra and that will keep you present. As soon as we leave the present moment, that's when we go into accidents happening not focus on right here, right now. We can injure ourselves. Inhale, hold the posture. Squeeze slight hold the bunda. Exhale, shin to the chest, arch the back up. Squeeze hold the bunda. And now gently come back to sit on the heels. If you feel compromised in the knees or the hips, then get a pillow and put the pillow underneath, underneath the butt between the heels, wherever you feel that compromise. And if it's too much, if you can't sit here for the next few minutes like this, then come into easy pose. You can do the same thing in easy pose. Hands are gently resting on the tops of the knees. Eyes rolled up to the brow point. You're going to inhale, squeeze the left shoulder up. You're going to exhale, squeeze the right shoulder up. Inhale, exhale. These are alternating shoulder shrugs. Inhale the left shoulder up. Exhale the right shoulder up. No, no, no. Hear the mantra in your breath. Find the pace and keep it 
pace. completely and deeply. Let everything go.
toes and rotate the ankles and the wrists and gently reverse the direction rotate the ankles and wrists the opposite way and inhale stretch the arms all the way behind you overhead stretch to the heart through the navel all the way to the toes and exhale sweep the arms down through that auric field Gently bring the knees toward the chest and rub the bottoms of the feet, palms of the hands together. Create some heat and gently hug the knees into the chest, rock side to side, left to right. Massaging the sacrum, massaging the upper spine, the shoulders and shoulder blades. Let the craniums and the neck rock back and forth. And the skull and the brain. And coming to the center, you can either roll to the left and push yourself up off the floor with your hands or roll back and forth from shoulder blade to tailbone, keeping the chin tucked to the chest and come all the way up when you're ready. And we have two more exercises and this is Everything is building up to this moment right now. So we're going to go into a posture. We're going to hold it for five minutes. And uh, this is what's going to create that pressure and that buildup for the glandular system. So coming onto the hands and knees, we're going to come into triangle. And again, equally, before you go into this mindfully, always go into a posture mindfully, align the body up so that it's in its best alignment to hold and maintain and lock into the posture. When the body locks into the posture, it can hold it. If the body is not in alignment, it'll be compromised. You might feel a pressure in the shoulder blade or the elbow or some other place in the body instead of the body locking in properly. So coming in on the hands and knees, again, fingers are spread wide equally. The pressure, you're gonna be pushing away from the floor with the heel of the hand. This is the heel of the hand right here. Curl the toes under, inhale. Exhale, lift the hips off the floor, push the heels into the floor, push away from the floor with the heels of the hands. The head is hanging down. So the heels are pushing into the floor, lengthening the body from the heel to the tailbone, and from the heel of the hand, you're pushing away, lengthening through the armpit, lengthening through the upper back, in a constant state of tension, but the head is relaxed hanging between the arms. Face is relaxed. Eyes are naturally rolled up to the brow point, the third eye. The breath is through the nose. Slow, deep breath. We're going to hold that. Continue. Lengthening through the armpits, all the way to the tailbone. 
keep pushing the heels down into the floor, lengthening the back of the legs, all the way to the pinnacle, which is your hips. You're constantly in a state of tension. But find the relaxation of the mind. Let the mind be relaxed while the body is in tension.
So again, anything that will help uh, support the lower back. And if you need um, to wrap yourself in something or not, it's a little, I'm a little bit cold because I'm working through a cold. Uh, I'll just change the music. So this is a very beautiful, very gentle, easy meditation, um, but very, very profound. It, it's a meditation for a calm mind. 
and it's best to be done. It's uh, perfect right now, so when we come out of it, we're going to do a smaller, a shorter, deeper relax, but it's for the end of the day to calm the mind after all of the things that you've been doing throughout the entire day, the stress of your daily life, your coming, your going, your career, your job, whatever's going on with the health, and all the responsibilities you have, our mind, it's harder to shut down sometimes, especially when we have turbulent times right now, we have a lot of things, extra things that we have to consider that we never thought we had to consider before. So in, to not get that proper sleep is again, adding a layer of our, uh, suppressing our immune system, adding a layer to the stress. Our mind body can't readjust. So this uh, brings us into that neutral meditative mind. So the mudra is all the fingertips and the thumbs are uh, pressed together and not in a tension state. They're just, they're touching, but it's not tight and tense. Sometimes it is, but in this meditation it's not. And the thumbs are pointed toward the center of the chest, so the heart center. They're not touching, they're just a few inches away. The shoulders are relaxed down the spine. And the other fingertips are kind of pointing out diagonally. The eyes are closed and they're rolled up to the brow point. And you're going to inhale in five breaths. So it's not segmented, it's just slow inhale. Inhaling in five, four, three, two, one, hold, five, four, three, two, one, and exhale, five, four, three, two, one. The navel's involved, so inhaling, hold, exhale. Continue like that. I'll do the counting until you you have calibrated it so that you're uh, you're internalizing that count. And here we go. Holding the posture. Inhaling. Hold.
to the center of the heart. Rub the palms together, create some heat. And we're going to close out with the long-term sun. This is what we do if you're not familiar with the Kundalini Yoga class. Every class across the planet, no matter what country you're in or what language you're in, you always end with the long-term sun. And we sing and we chant that together three times. And the, each time, the first time we're chanting it from a place of giving grace and gratitude for our body, for showing up, for keeping up the very best that we can. And the second round, we're sending that energy, that same energy that we came in, that we have shifted from the beginning of class all the way to now. We send that, we project that out to those in our family, those around us, those we hold space for. We send that love energy out to them. And the third round, we project even more powerfully all the way across the planet. All of those who are in peril right now, who are worried, concerned, who are in fear, fight, and flight, send that stabilizing energy out to them. It has a profound effect. So hands at the center of the chest, eyes are closed, rolled up to the brow point. Let's inhale to begin together. around you. Uh -huh. 
today with three long sat nams. We're going to vibrate that energy from the root all the way up through each energy center, all the way out the crown of the head. We'll do that three times together with the long, deep inhales. Inhale together to begin. So. Be healthy, be whole. Set down. Thank you for participating in this recorded class, and I look forward to our next meeting. Set down.